It all began on April Fool's Day of 2023. I woke up that day and uh, a family member showed me a picture of a clock that they saw that they thought that I would be interested in getting. It was only 20 bucks. So I decided that I would go get it and well, I got it and it became the first tall case clock in my collection. It was my grandmother clock. When I got the clock, the clock had this electric movement in it. Now, the electric movement had the cable cut off. Well, part of it. The part where you'd plug it in. So, obviously, the movement was not usable. So, I had to go and figure out something else. Now, a lot of people didn't really like this idea, but um, I had to get a quartz movement for it. And, of course, that took a few months. A friend on Discord recommended that I get a Seiko movement, which is the same movement this is, that is in my schoolhouse clock. So, I looked for one on eBay, and I was able to find one, and, well, I got the movement in June, but it remained in its box for a few months since, at the time, I was packing up my room to be renovated but the grandmother clock stayed with me at home because it was too big to bring to storage so um, throughout the time I kept it home I actually didn't do much with it for a couple months the end of July came along and uh, I was just noticing the grandmother clock sitting there so I decided that I wanted to restore the wood since the wood didn't really look as good. So a friend on Discord recommended that I get this wood finishing product which is well it's to restore broken wood and uh, well I didn't really know if I could find it at some hardware store or something but I was able to get it and well, the clock um, looks a little better now than it did before. It doesn't look much different on camera, but if you see it in person, it looks way different. A couple more weeks pass, and then my room is finished. The walls have been painted, the floor has been installed, and uh, so the first things I put in were the were my desks and shelves and other furniture in my bed too. But then I put my grandmother clock in. That was the first clock I put in my new room. Or my renovated room, I should say. And the first thing I did with it was I filmed part four. And I installed the movement. And the movement was quite hard to install. Like that, the, the hand shaft was very, very tiny. Or no, no not the hand shaft, the nut shaft. That was really tiny, but I was able to screw it on correctly. Alright, from this point, a couple more months pass along without any other update. And, well, it just sits there, like, in its spot. It took me a long time, but eventually, around December, I finally found the one piece that was missing. A pendulum. So, I was able to get a pendulum of the right size, and I installed it, and it looks pretty good on the clock.
After filming part six, I decided that I was going to film a documentary for the, the full documentary for this grandmother clock. Um, and yeah, here it is now. Um, over a month later, and the pendulum still works fine. The clock itself is really good. Now, there's one debate I have, and it's between adding this back panel right onto the clock. I would need to staple it back on because it was stapled on. But if I add that, then I will need... Well, then I'll be able to get weights well fake weights not decoration weight, not real weights this clock is quartz so it doesn't run on real weights so but if i do get the real weights it'll add a little bit of detail hoping it doesn't get in the way of the pendulum so now you guys are asking probably a few common questions so i'm going to answer a few questions that i feel like i'd be asked the first question is, why did you change it to quartz? So the reason why I changed it to quartz is because the case could not support a mechanical movement. Uh, a mechanical movement, I would need to add a lot more screws and drill a lot more holes into the case, and I did not want to do that. I just wanted to keep it simple, and an electric movement would be way too hard to find because, well... I don't really know where I could find electric movements. I mean, I guess I could find them online, but either way, it's a little too late. But I was able to change it to quartz, but I still like it. I know not as many of you do, but, well, I do. Next question is a very commonly asked question, I think. What is the difference between a grandmother clock and a grandfather clock? Their height. A grandmother clock is between 5 and 6 feet, and a grandfather clock is above 6 feet. I can show you this, as you can see in the picture shown. The grandmother clock is about 5 foot 9 to 5 foot 10, or something like that. And the grandfather clock is well above 6 feet. So therefore, there is a massive height difference between the two. Now this next question, which is going to be the last one for today, might not be asked as much, but I still thought that someone might ask it. Where's the back panel? So yeah, the back panel, it came with the back panel, but the back panel was a piece of wood, but it was split in two pieces, so yeah, now I don't want to have to pay money to get another one, so I'm just going to leave it like that. It doesn't really affect the clock in any way. It still runs fine. This is the same thing going on with my grandfather clock, too. Like, I need to staple that back on, but I don't know if I really want to, to be honest. But, yeah, there's still the door. But, yeah. Alright, guys. This wraps up the Grandmother Clock full documentary. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And, well, see you soon.